1 Timothy 6 and 12. 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. The next verse describes how Jesus stood in front of Pilate and made a confession. And in that confession he said, For this reason I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth, giving us insight into the fight. What's the fight about and how is it waged? Well, what you say is a big part of it. Jesus fights with his mouth. We see that in more than one place. It's not a fist fight. It's a faith fight. Right? And one of the big issues that it's about is the truth. The truth. Said out loud, fight, fight. the good fight, the good fight. of faith. Now go with me over to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians 6, I'm going to start about verse 10 and we're going to read the complete Jewish Bible translation, the CJB, Ephesians 6, 10. And he describes spiritual conflict spiritual fight. Verse 10, it says, uh, finally, grow powerful. This is Ephesians 6, 10, complete Jewish. Grow powerful in union with the Lord, in union with his mighty strength. You're not just strong in yourself. He's in you. Hmm? You're strong in him. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides. Has God given us any weaponry, yes. any armor? Yes. Now, you know, there's been some talk and some teaching, thank the Lord, about the armor of God. But I still think it's, it's too vague and too general and not real to most people. And I'm believing for that to change. Yes. I'm believing that's changing with us, yes. right, in this series and as we speak. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides. I want you to pray this out loud. Father God, Father God reveal, to me reveal to me personally, personally the, armor the, armor the armor you have given me, the weaponry you have given me, what it really is, it really how, is. It really how it really works, cause it to become, cause it to become real, real every, day every day to me I ask in Jesus' name. Glory to God. So be it. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you'll be able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the enemy. That's what the armor and weaponry is for. It's for standing against what the enemy is bringing against you. Do you have an enemy? Yes. We do. Is there a devil? Yes. Are there demons or evil spirits? Yes. There are. They're real. And most people get in one ditch or the other. And the reason people do is because the enemy is working to get you in one ditch or the other. All the time. He either wants people to believe there is no such thing as a devil or a demon or evil spirit. Or he wants you to get in the ditch on the other side where that you talk too much about them and you're scared of them. Yes. Hmm? Amen. And both of those absolutely wrong. Amen. The child of God should have no fear. Amen. None. No fear of the devil or any evil spirit at all. And when you know the truth, the truth will make you free from the fear of the devil. If when you think about the devil, you shudder and you go, ooh, let's not talk about the devil. Ooh, ooh, the devil, the devil. Then you, you're not enlightened. 
You, your, your understanding is dark and you're not thinking right. The truth will make you free Amen. from that fear. Amen. The devil is real. If you believe the Bible, you have to believe that. Amen. Right? Amen. Evil spirits are real. They have influence. They're influencing the world greatly. Much more than most people have any idea. But the enemy can do nothing to you unless you yield to him. That's the truth many people have not seen. He can't do anything. If he could, he would have killed you a long time ago. He would have taken you out so long ago. You know why he hasn't taken you out already? Because he can't. Amen. Has not been able to. Amen. He's tried. Amen. Come on, anybody besides me had some close scrapes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, brother. I got scars to prove it. I've, I've dove into shallow water and had my wrist cut open by sharp rocks. I've, I've wrecked trucks and was thrown through barbed wire fences. I, I've gone down on motorcycles and slid on my hands and knees up the... I, I've had some situations. <laughs> the devil has had several marvelous opportunities to take me out, but I have been kept by the mercy of God, by the angels of the Lord. I've been kept. I've been kept. You've been kept. That's why we're still here looking at each other. Amen. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And if you and I will just have a heart and a desire to find God's will and to do it, you know a lot of the things that he did for us, uh, some of it we weren't even saved. And the Lord knew in the process of time we would say yes to him and we would follow him. He knew that. Amen. And in his great mercy, he spared us so that we got an opportunity to do it. But don't let the enemy bring thoughts to you and convince you that you should be scared of him, that he can come do this to you, he can come do that to you. He's tried to do all kind of stuff to you your whole life, and God's kept you. And you know more about the Lord and him keeping you now than you ever did before, is that right? So you ought to just be in better shape, safer now than you ever were. If God kept you in your ignorance, surely you ought to believe he could keep you with you in some faith now. <laughs> keep going. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you will be able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary or the King James says the wiles of the devil. It's not the power of the devil you ought to be concerned about. It's his trickery. I said it's his trickery. Jesus has defeated the one who had the power of death. He stripped him. He's brought him to naught. Is that right? And so the devil doesn't have the power to come and destroy you. Like we said, if he could, he'd have done it a long time ago. But what he does have and what is working all too well is his trickery. He is a master deceiver. Master deceiver. He's been practicing on human beings for millennia. And there is nobody in the universe better at tricking human beings than him. And while you ought not be afraid of the devil, you ought to be alert and on the watch for him trying to trick you and deceive you and lie to you every day and every night. This is where the fight comes in. Don't be afraid of the devil, but be very watchful about him deceiving you. And don't think that you're so smart that he can't deceive you because you're just the guy he's looking for. Amen. He will agree with you about how smart you are. <laughs> Come on. 
while he is leading you down the path. There never was. Every committer of fraud and deception, every shyster, every liar, every deceiver that was ever, you know, very, very good at that in the world, they all got it from him. He's the master, tricker, deceiver. So the armor, the weaponry is to stand against these wiles, these schemes, these deceits. That's what it's about. Now, if you don't believe that, or if that's not important enough, to, spectacular enough to you, you're going to be at a disadvantage. Amen. You're going to be ignorant of his device and, and easily duped. People have developed concepts of spiritual warfare that don't line up with the scriptures. This is one of the most important things you could ever say about spiritual warfare. In fact, hold your place here and go to 2 Corinthians that we've looked at before. It describes it so perfectly. 2 Corinthians 10 describes exactly how the war is waged. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. It's not a flesh fight. It's not a fist fight. It's a faith fight. It's a spirit fight. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Keep reading. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Do we have weapons? Yeah. This is another passage we're seeing it in. We have weaponry. We have armor and weapons. It's not natural. It's spiritual. But is spirit real? Yes. God is spirit. Is he real? Yes. In fact, you are spirit. Yes. Right? Yes. Your spirit. You will exist without this body. Hmm? This body is simply the house your spirit is dwelling in. And the Lord tarries his com coming very long at all. You'll, you'll die. Your body will die. And you'll slip out of it just like a hand slips out of a glove. And you won't turn into an angel. That'd be a demotion. You're going to be you. I said, you're going to be you. You're going to have all your memories. Somebody said, uh, well, we know one another in heaven. Well, only if you knew them down here. <laughs> you're going to be you, and they're going to be them. There's scripture that, that reveals that. But this body is not me. This body is the house I live in. And you're sitting there right now looking at me through those two windows Amen. we call eyes. I see your house, but I don't see you. You're on the inside. Yes. I'm on the inside. Amen. You're spirit. I'm spirit. God is spirit. God is called the father of spirits. And though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. And the weapons of our warfare, they're, they're not carnal. They're not natural. They're not flesh. They're not physical material. But they are mighty. They're real. And they're powerful. Through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now don't stop there. That's not even the end of the sentence. Verse 6. What kind of strongholds? Casting down imaginations. This is how the war is waged. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Do thoughts matter? They matter much more than most folks realize. Go back to thing after thing in your life and realize how it started and where it started. We're having church here in Sarasota. We're having church in Branson. There was a time not too many years ago we didn't have a church in Branson. And there was a time not too many, not even you know, less time than that, we didn't have a church here in Sarasota. Amen. There was a time... When a thought came. In fact, with that, the church in Branson, the Lord had to work on me with that thought to get that thought in me. Because I didn't, I didn't think I was a pastor. Because I knew I had call and grace in other areas. And I struggled with that. 
And finally, one day, I had people tell me, well, you, you can't be this and this. You have to be this or this. You can't be a, a teacher or a prophet and a pastor. You, you have to be this or that. And, and people have different ideas. And, and finally, one day, I was, I was praying about it for the nth time, looking out the window. And, and uh, I said, Lord, what about this? What about this prophet, pastor thing? And, and, and the Lord said, I was. <laughs> I thought, well, you know that's right. <laughs> he said, quit trying to figure this out and just do what I tell you to do. <laughs> and so, hallelujah. But, but can you see, it was a thought. Before it, before it was uh, anything material, it was a thought. So good and great things can come from God bringing you a thought. Right? That leads you to something else. That leads you to something else that leads you to act on it, that leads God to come and manifest it. Come on, can you see this? Well, this is exactly how the enemy works too. He comes and brings a thought to you. Now, you don't have to receive it, but he's very tricky. He, 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 don't, don't wait till you see uh, something in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork. He's not going to come that way. In fact, the scripture says he transforms himself as an angel of light. One of his favorite things is to bring you a thought that's from the devil, but him try to convince you it's actually from God. That's one of his favorite things to do. And he's quite good at it. Which is why you need to know your Bible. You need to read your chapter every day. You need to come to church when you're supposed to be in church and get filled with the Word of God so that you got the light, the standard to compare everything that comes to you against. What, what are you supposed to be doing? Read this verse again. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What if you have no knowledge of God? Well, you've got nothing to compare it to to even know if it's right or not. Come on, can you see this? And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Somebody say every thought. Every thought. Every thought. I was preaching on this some years ago. A fellow came up to me after. He said, I got it, Brother Keith. I got it. He said, every mind needs a bouncer at the door. <laughs> Revealing some of his background, I guess. But every mind needs a bouncer at the door. And there's a truth to that. Every thought that comes to you, you need to slide back the little eye peep and go, who are you? What do you say? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's contrary to the Word of God. Shh, you can't come in. And if we would do that and not allow ourselves to think on it, meditate on it, much less talk it and do it, the enemy could not get any place in us. He couldn't make any headway with us. And so our armor, each piece of our armor is designed for this, to protect us so that this lies and these deceptions can't get in. Go back to Ephesians, please. Ephesians, 6th chapter. Verse 10, he said, finally grow powerful in union with the Lord, in union with his mighty strength. Use all the armor and weaponry, Ephesians 6, 11, that God provides so that you'll be able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary. Now, if you read this passage, it keeps saying against, against, stand, withstand, against. One of the same phrases translated here is translated resist, where it says resist the devil. Same word, same idea. What are you supposed to do in this spiritual conflict? What's the main thing you're supposed to do? Resist. Resist. Withstand. Stand against. Don't let it in. Don't let it in your mind. Don't let it, don't let it into your feelings. Don't let it into your life. And this armor and weaponry is some, some things that God has given us to enable us to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary. For we're not struggling against human beings, but against the rulers, authorities, cosmic powers, actually that's world powers, governing this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Now we talked in some detail about that last weekend. We won't go into it now. But uh, there are four categories 
of evil influence in the world. He says, so take up every piece of war equipment God provides so that when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist. That's one reason I wanted to use this translation because that is the same Greek word that's translated resist the devil in James. That you may be able to resist and when the battle is won, you'll still be standing. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now, let's look at it again. So take up every piece of war equipment God provides. Who's going to do that? Who's the understood subject here? You are to take this up. This is something we have to do. God's given it to us, but we have to put it on. Hmm? It's not on you automatically just because God gave it to you. You have to receive it and by faith put it on. Do you think we ought to know how to do that? Yeah. It's not complicated, and yet it's our responsibility. So when the evil day comes, so is it going to come? Yeah. Are you going to be attacked? Yeah. You're going to be. Mrs. Oh, please don't talk about that. <laughs> you, you may have been attacked before you got to church this morning. Yeah. In thoughts, in feelings, in ideas, in imagine, what's in the imagination? Images, pictures to your mind, feelings. We, we, we talked the last couple of times about how the enemy came to these people and sat on their shoulder and whispered thoughts to them. Now, this is not something audible that you hear. It's not something physical that you see, but it's real. I said, it's real. It's real. And these thoughts will come to you, suggestions, imaginations, feelings, temptations. And what are you supposed to do? Come on, help me out. What are you supposed to do? Resist, resist it. Resist. Somebody say resist it. Resist. Stand against it. Amen. Withstand it. Amen. Refuse it. Refuse. And God has given us specific armor and weaponry to do that with. Amen. Are you happy about it? Amen. <laughs> Makes me happy. Therefore, verse 14, stand. Have the belt of truth buckled around your waist and put on righteousness for a breastplate. Wear on your feet the readiness that comes from the good news of shalom. You see one reason I'm reading the complete Jewish. Always carry the shield of trust. I, I like the translation of faith, shield of faith, which, with which you'll be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So are there arrows coming your way? Yes. What are these arrows? They're thoughts. They're images. Their feelings, their suggestions, their temptations, are they real? They are very real. And that's why sometimes people have gotten confused and they say, well, this is spiritual and it's real, so it must be God. No, not everything that's spiritual and real is God. Amen. And people say, well, I know these feelings are real. I'm not, we're not saying they're not real. They are real. Yes. But this is so real. And I just feel so strong about it. And that doesn't make it right. Amen. I said, that doesn't make it right. You could be under attack. Come on. Right. Yeah. Amen. Just because you feel strongly a certain way does not mean you should yield to that feeling. Right. You should examine and go, what right do I have to feel this way? Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. And if you say, well, I, I can't help what I feel, then you're already defeated. You're already defeated. Because you believe a lie. An arrow, has, a, a, a deception arrow has pierced you. And you're wounded. You believe a lie. Come on, sit out loud. My mind, my mind is my mind. Is my mind. I, don't I don't have to. Think on anything, think on anything. I, choose I choose not to think on. To think on. My, soul my soul is my soul. Is my soul. I don't have to. Yield to any feelings. To any feelings. I, choose not to. I choose not to. Now, friend, you must believe this, or else you're in trouble. Amen. Amen. Hmm? 
If you want to act pitiful and go, well, I can't help how I feel, then you are going to be a defeated mess. Yeah. Hmm? And you're not coming out. Well, I can't help what I think. Then you're going to be confused and depressed and oppressed. And you're not coming out. And there are millions right there. There's even a lot of church going people, good people that are defeated because they believe lies. But the truth will make you free. And the truth is you don't have to give the devil one inch. You don't have to give him any place in your mind, in your feelings, come on, in your life. You don't have to give him anything. The devil's, if you will, finest hour, greatest hour, was when he was involved in getting Jesus crucified. And Jesus said that. He said, now is the, the, the power of darkness. It's, it's, you could say it, it's the devil's big, big to do. He said, but he went on to say this. He said, but he has nothing in me. Don't you like that? He said, he doesn't have a thing in me. And even though the devil thought he was pulling off the crime of the universe, he was playing right into God's plan. Come on, can you see that? The Bible said, if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory because when they took him in, they took in their decimation, their destruction, because he was raised, hallelujah, over death, hell, and the grave. He said today in Revelation, I got the keys. I got, I got the keys. <laughs> but, don't, but don't you like it what Jesus said? He has nothing in me. So how about you? How about you? Come on, you ought to say it. You ought to say it. He has Nothing in me. Now, why would he have nothing in you? Because you didn't let it in. Not because it didn't come to you, because it's going to come to you. It's going to come to you, me, everybody. I mean, if you live in this earth, it's going to come to you. And you're going to have to be on the watch, and you're going to have to cast it down today and tomorrow and the next day. And I know that doesn't sound nice, but it's reality. Amen. We're in a fight. Amen. Hmm? And we got to fight. But when you know what it is, you realize it's a good fight. Amen. Why? Because we just keep winning. Yeah. We just keep on winning. Yeah. That's why it wouldn't be a good fight. Right. How many of you get whooped bad? That's not a good fight. <laughs> you get beat up? That's not a good fight. We said, what happened to you? Got beat to a pulp. Oh, it was a good fight. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's not a good fight for you unless you win. <laughs> I tell you, y'all are a good bunch to preach to. I, I like you real good. Always carry this shield of faith with which you'll be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Get that picture in your mind. There are coming flaming arrows. Today we might compare it to bullets. And what are they? They're thoughts. They're images. They're suggestions. Feelings, temptations. And they're coming. And if you let them get in, they'll pierce you. They'll hurt you. They'll damage you. They'll wound you. And the damage it inflicts is deception and darkness. Amen. And that opens you up to destruction. Right. Say it out loud. Deception, deception. Darkness, darkness, destruction. destruction. See, if these darts, missiles, bullets can get in, that's the, the effect they, they cause. Is deception, darkness, and destruction. He went on to say, and take the helmet of deliverance, our salvation, along with the sword given by the Spirit. That is the Word of God. Man, I'm, I'm just itching to get to that sword of the Spirit part because that is, that is so powerful. But one thing at a time. As you pray at all times with all kinds of prayers and requests in the Spirit, vigilantly and persistently for all God's people. Get the picture? You're all dressed up, ready to wield the Word of God, 
ready to pray, ready to bind, ready to run your race, ready to overcome. Now let's look at a couple of these at least today, these pieces of armor. The first ones he mentions are the belt of truth, and then he talks about the breastplate of righteousness. Now King James talks about being girt, uh, and that means to encircle, to go all the way around. How many like the sound of that? Let me read some other uh, translations of this to you. It says, and I got so many scriptures here. Uh, one translation says, the, the WEB, World English, says, stand having the utility belt of truth buckled around your waist. Why would he say utility belt? Anybody in here know what a utility belt is? Come on, help me out. I know I got tra craftsmen, tradesmen. You got, it's not just a belt that holds your pants up. It's a belt that you attach stuff to. Right? You put your hammer on it. Huh? You got your uh, measuring what am I trying to say? Measure. Tape measure, you got that on there. You, you got this, you got that, you got the other. Hmm? Yeah. Utility belt. Well, that's what the soldier had too. Not just a belt that, that held his pants up. I, I guess they didn't wear pants like we do. But this, this belt, the scabbard was on it that the sword went in. Right? And then also the breastplate attached to it and other people's attached to it. Now let's don't get too hung up. We're not talking about a physical belt, are we? This is spiritual. But what are we to learn from the illustration? It's the belt of what? Truth. What's the first thing he talks about in the armor of God? If you don't have this, you don't have the place to carry and put your sword. You don't have the place to attach the other pieces on. It starts with this. And you are encircled with truth. Hallelujah. And this belt also went down and covered, you, you know, below the, the, the navel, below the belt. It was connected to the belt. And then the breastplate went, if you look up the words, it literally means from neck to navel the breastplate, and then from the navel down below that, you know, getting, I guess, about halfway down your knees, parts of it was the belt. Somebody say the belt of truth. The belt of truth. The belt of truth. Now, what, what are you and I supposed to do with the belt of truth? We're supposed to put on truth. And we're supposed to, the breastplate of righteousness, we're supposed to put on righteousness. What does this let us know? Lies are going to come. Lies are going to come and the thing that'll, that'll help us to deflect them and resist them is truth. How do you know it is a lie? Because you know the truth and you know this doesn't agree with the truth. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. How many know he is the truth? He is the way, the truth, and the life, and the light. Somebody say, put on truth. Put on truth. Put on truth. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The belt of truth protects us from everything that is not true. From everything, what do we carry on it? The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. What is the Word of God? It's the word of truth. Jesus said, thy word is truth. Can you see how we keep coming back to truth? We keep coming back to truth. And every one of these armor, pieces of armor, is a piece of truth and light. Every one of them. Righteousness. Is that a truth? 
Huh? Yes. Is that is the revelation of righteousness a revelation of truth? Yes. Is that light? Yes. It's not darkness. Yes. And what does that protect? Well, that protects your heart, your lungs, your liver, right? And the, the breastplate of righteousness had, had a front and a back. Oh, somebody say glory to God. It was two peaks. Well, you need your back covered too. How many know God's got your back? And he's got your front. If you'll receive it and put it on, put on what? Put on the breastplate of righteousness. It, it consists of two parts. It protects the body on both sides and from the neck to the navel. The truth of righteousness. So what does that mean? One of the key areas the enemy is going to shoot at you in is that you're not righteous. Hmm? That you are not right with God you are not right in his eyes. You are not acceptable to him. You are not good enough for him. And if you believe that, then you have no protection. You have not put on the breastplate of righteousness. And if you, if you don't put on righteousness, you are easily pierced by these lies. I'm letting this sink in a little bit. Hmm? Have you ever let the enemy shoot you with one of these arrows? Hmm? You're not, you, you don't deserve this and you're not good enough for this and you're not right. I mean, all the mistakes you've made and all the things that you've done, you, you're not right in the eyes of God. When he sees you, he winces. God looks at you and goes, hmm. <laughs> now that is a case. And he just looks at you. And when he looks at you, he does not see right. He sees everything that's wrong about you. Come on. Yeah. Hmm? When God looks at you, will the devil try to convince you of this? He is the accuser of the brethren. He will accuse uh, you to God. And he will accuse you to you. Huh? One of the things the enemy will come to do, he'll come and sit on your shoulder. And he'll say, man, you're a, you're a pitiful thing. You're supposed to be a Christian. Thinking about this. And he's the one that just brought you the thought. <laughs> Thinking about this. And, and how you messed up on this. And you lost your temper on that. And you said this, and you did this, and you raised your voice, and you did that. You're supposed to be a Christian. Hmm? Yep, and, and dredge up sins from the past. Oh, yeah. And you lied about this. And you did that, and you stole that. Right in the sight of God. You've got to be joking. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and if you go, <laughs> I know it. I know it. I'm just pitiful. I know it. I'm just, I know it. I'm just, I'm just awful. I'm just. Come on. That's right. You're totally exposed. That's how people become weeping puddles. Come on, baby. Amen. Come on. Huh? Total depression. Amen. Feeling sorry for themselves. Come on. I'm no good. Nobody likes me. Why should they? I'm such a nothing, no good piece of junk. <laughs> and if you're, if you're hitting yourself in the head, the devil will go, you got that right. He'll say, here, let me give you my hammer. And he'll take your little ball peen and he'll put a sledgehammer in your hand. And he'll say, let me tell you what you forgot about. How bad you are and what you're not and how awful you've been and everything. What will protect you from that? Come on, help me out, saints. 
Has God given us something, come on, to protect us from this killer condemnation? Huh? From this guilt that'll gut you. Come on, are y'all with me? Has God given us something that can protect our vital parts from being pierced with the barrage of lies that'll come against you constantly if you'll listen to them? Yes, 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 but you got to put it on. I said, you got to put it on. Go with me uh, to Corinthians, please. Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter. We're going to put it on today. And you know, I hear people talking about uh, putting on their armor every morning. But you know, I don't know why you couldn't sleep in it. Huh? Do you? Because uh, do you think the devil uh, is not going to shoot at you at nighttime? <laughs> Sometimes when you lay down and go to bed and go to sleep and get quiet, it, it, the enemy will try to bring thoughts against you. But Especially if you had some problems earlier that day, right? Made some mistakes. Second Corinthians 6, 7 says, By the word of truth... By the power of God, by the armor of what? The armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I got righteousness. I got righteousness. On, the front, on the front, on the back, on the, back, on the, left, on the left, on the right. On the right. I'm, encompassed. I'm encompassed. I'm encircled. By the armor of righteousness. What is righteousness? Well, the us and ness is Old English. In King James, it just means rightness. Being right. Right with God. Right in his eyes. Right with him. And here's the thing. The Bible's either true or it's not. What Jesus did is either effective or it's not. His blood is either powerful or it's not. I'm either clean or I'm not. I'm either made righteous or I'm not. Come on, are y'all with me? This is not based on my performance. This is not based on my good deeds. This is not based on my intense effort. This is based on what Jesus has already done and bought and paid for and gave to me, but I still have to put it on. I still got to put it on and keep it on. Go to the fifth chapter. Oh, I believe somebody's getting helped out of this. I, I believe. I, I can just see it. The devil's been shooting people and they've just been letting him. Letting him shoot them. Letting him shoot them. And there's some of these wrong spirits. They're so used to shooting, it's just become a game to them. Yeah. Come on, let's go shoot oh so-and-so. <laughs> let's watch them cry. Watch them writhe around. Huh? And they've done it so many times, so many times for so many years. It's just, they expect it. They're going to get a surprise. I said, they're going to get a surprise. Come on, are you with me? They're going to get a surprise. Come on, let's go shoot oh so-and-so. And they shoot, and it's going to go, bring. They're going to go, what? What? Come on, cry. <laughs> You're pitiful. You're a disaster. You're a sad sack. Here. <laughs> and they're not going to agree with that this time. They're not going to accept that this time. Come on, they're not going to receive that. They're not going to yield to it. They're not going to let it in. They're going to say this, 2 Corinthians 5. Are you there? 2 Corinthians 5, 21. This is how you put on the breastplate of righteousness that covers you from neck to navel, in the front and the back and on both sides. He, God, has made him, this has already happened, to be sin for us who knew no sin. 
Was Jesus really made sin? Did he commit any sin? No. Whose sin was he made sin with? Was he really made sin with my sin and your sin? Sin is unrighteousness. Sin is what makes you unright. Sin is not right. And living and yielding to sin would make you not right in the eyes of God. And all of us have sinned and missed it and come short of the glory of God. But, but the Father in his great love for us and Jesus in his great love for us, the Father put our sin on Jesus and he didn't just empathize, sympathize, he literally took it into himself and became our sin. That's why the, the brass snake on the pole is a type of Jesus on the cross. John 3 talks about this. How could a snake on a pole be a type of Jesus because the snake and the brass is a type of sin and judgment. And on the, the cross is not a pretty place. On the cross, the spotless, sinless one became sin. He became sin. He has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. And when he became sin, the judgment for sin came on him. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. And what did that do for us? That redeemed us from the curse of the law and that qualified us for the blessing of Abraham. <laughs> but as surely... As he became sin with our sin, we now by faith have become righteous with his righteousness. This is not something you earn. This is not something you achieve. This is not something you uh, accomplish through some intense effort. It's a free gift. The Lord says, I know the devil and his cohorts have been shooting you with condemnation and, and all that junk and hurting you. Here, cover yourself up with my righteousness. Here, put this on. Put this on yourself, honey. Put it on. Come on, somebody put it on. Come on, take, take the, the breastplate of right. It goes over your head. Come on. And it's on the front here and it's on the back. And let's fasten it to the belt of truth here. Let's, let's fasten it down here. Come on, let's fasten it on the side. Now, how's it, how's it feeling? It's, really, it's, it's better than Kevlar, I'm telling you. It's just lightweight, but it is impenetrable. It's impenetrable. Impenetrable. If you'll keep it on. Come on, can you feel it? Tink, 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 tink. How do you know it's on? How do you know it's on? Because when any thought or suggestion comes to you, you're not accepted with God. All the stuff you've done, all the mistakes you've made, God has to turn away when he looks at you. You say, shut up. That's a lie. That's right. That's right. When God sees me, he smiles. <laughs> When God sees me, it pleases him. Because you know what he sees when he looks at me? Jesus. He sees Jesus. Because I'm in Christ. And Christ is in me. When he sees me, he does not see Keith Moore's righteousness. Mine wouldn't cut it. He sees Jesus' own righteousness. Now, the church has stumbled over this. You know, I've had, we, we've had people, meetings we've went to that, that, that march and hold signs and say, you are not righteous, you are not right. Well, if Jesus became sin with my sin, did, did it really happen? Yes. I said, did it really happen? Yes. Was it his sin? Yes. 
Did he deserve it? No. no. But did he really become sin? Yes. Then to what end? Why? So that this verse would come to pass. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Do you believe the Bible? Yes. Do you believe the New Testament? Yes. Say it out loud. God made him, God made him to, be sin to be sin for me, for me. That, I might be that I might be made, made. The, righteousness the righteousness of God, of God. In, him. in him, in Christ. In Christ. I am the righteousness I of God. Am. Not in me, Not in, me. in him. In him. I, but I am. I am. How do you know you got the breastplate on? I'm righteous. I'm righteous. I know, I know that rubs your religious head the wrong way. I know years of wrong teaching in your, your mind will go, no, 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 I'm, I'm not righteous. I'm a worm. I'm a worm. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm no, he's everything and I'm nothing. He has made you something. Yes, sir. My father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin Sr., who's in heaven now, he described how that he had a, the, the Lord appeared to him and he saw him. And he said the first time he looked at him, he described him. He told how high, how tall he is, the color of his hair, everything. He described him to a T. And somebody said, uh, asked him, well, what was the most remarkable feature about him? He said, his eyes. His eyes. He said, they look like you could look down into them a mile deep. And he said, I, he said, this doesn't describe it, but it's the best I've come up with. He said, they look like wells of living love that you could see down into a mile deep. And he said, when he first looked on the Lord, he was just overwhelmed. And he fell down at his feet. And he said, Lord, no one as unworthy as I should look on your face. How many think you would feel that way in the presence of such purity, such holiness, such glory? He said, Lord, no one is unworthy as I should look on your face. And he said, the Lord said, stand up. Stand up on your feet. <laughs> How many think when the Lord said that, you're not going to lay there and argue with him? <laughs> huh? <laughs> he said he stood up. He got up trembling. And said so the Lord looked at him and said, I have made you worthy. I have made you worthy to look on my face. Why? Because we could never get there on our own. No matter what we might do, he had to get it and just give it to us. But he did give it to us. Come on. And I, for one, am receiving it. Come on, how about you? And I'm putting it on. Come on, somebody say, he has made me worthy. Yes. He has made me righteous. He has made me righteous. You, you might Lord. say, well, what if I messed up big time? What if I committed a big sin, you know, yesterday? Have you ever heard of 1 John 1, 9? Come on, you ought to look at it. Somebody, somebody might not have heard about it. 1 John 1, 9, one of the greatest verses you'll ever see. 1 John 1, 9, if you mess up, we know it's already been, been paid for, but you still have to receive what's been bought and paid for. If we'll confess it, acknowledge it, don't run from him. Don't try to hide it. He already knows. Run to him. Go to him. Say, Lord, you know what happened? I, I, I acknowledge it. That's wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I confess it. Don't play games. Don't say, well, some folks said it was not right, and other folks said they thought it was okay, and and I don't, don't play games. Don't play games. You know in your heart. Acknowledge it. And if you'll do that, he is what? Come on. He is faithful and just. How can he be just? Because of the price that's already been paid. He is just in what he's doing. To forgive us of our sins and to do what else? Come on, to do what else? To, of what? Well, if you are cleansed of all unrighteousness, what remains? Righteousness. Nothing but righteousness. righteousness. Right. Hallelujah. 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 
So number one, you receive the righteousness that Christ has given you, his own righteousness. And if you do mess up, then you acknowledge it and, and receive your forgiveness and your cleansing from all unrighteousness, the end result being that you are righteous. Come on, you need to say it out loud a couple of times. Say it out loud. I'm righteous. He's made me righteous. Now see, if you believe that and you counter everything that tries to tell you you're not with that, you've got the breastplate on. You've got it on. And you are protected. And you won't be pierced. And you won't cry and feel sorry for yourself half the time. Come on, are you listening? You won't act pitiful. Even if you mess up terribly. I know we all got feelings to deal with. And it bothers you and it hurts you. But you got to get in faith. I said, you got to get in faith. You run to the Lord. You say, Lord, I did it or I did it again. I acknowledge it. It's not right. And forgive me. And I receive my forgiveness. And I receive my righteousness restored. Because elsewise, you'll have your, right, your breast played off. And you'll be easily hurt and hit. And no matter what comes, it says, well, look at you. You're not going to get this now. You're not going to be used now. You're not going to get to be a part of this now. You know, one of the other pieces of armor is the helmet. Right? Of salvation. And these two go together. The enemy is all the time trying to tell people you're not saved. You're not saved anymore. After what you've done. And if you believe that lie, you get zinged in the head. And you will go off the rails if you believe, hey, I'm lost anyway. What kind of stuff will you do? You will go off the rails. You'll think, well, it doesn't matter what I do anyway. I might as well just... You know, do anything I'm big enough to do because I'm going to hell anyway. And it's a lie. Yeah. I said, it's a lie. Yeah. Come on, you might as well put your helmet on too. Come on, put, put your helmet on. Amen. Come on, say, I am saved. I am saved. I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward. To, Jesus to Jesus coming. I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward. To, going to going home to be with Jesus. Jesus. I'm not lost. I'm not lost. I'm not going to be lost. I'm saved, saved, saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Going to be with Jesus. I'm saved. And you never let anything or anybody tell you otherwise. Your whole life long. And then you got that helmet on. Come on, can you see how this works? Stand on your feet, everybody.